ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد the next thing imam bukhari says after he said i met more than 1000 sheikhs and they all believed that iman is speech and actions that is iman is belief in the heart statements of the tongue and action of the limbs and iman increases and decreases then he said that the quran we believe also the quran is the speech of allah it is not created and then he says wa anna al-khayra wa sharra bil qadar and that this issue now is the called the issue of qadar which as we know it is one of the six principles of iman one of the six principles of iman is to believe in qadar al iman an tu'mina bi billahi is to believe in allah and then wa malaikati and his angels wa kutubihi and his books wa rusuli and his messengers wal yawm al akhir in the last day the day of judgment and wal qadar khayri wa sharr and to believe in the qadar the good and the bad of it it's a fundamental principle of our faith Al-Qadr. He says we believe that the good and the evil is by the pre- preordainment of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Say, I seek refuge by the Lord of the Falaq, the daybreak. مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ From the evil of what he has created. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah has created you and what you make or what you do like we said this before allah has created us and our actions are also created you understand since we are created our actions are created and i always know this topic is always tricky for some people so i want you to listen carefully we only have 20 minutes 20 minutes discussion of this inshallah And due to his saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Everything we have created with qadr. The pre-ordainment. In English, they call it the pre-ordainment. Or the pre-decree. Uh, or the predestination. All of those words come to the same meaning. Meaning if it was something which was ordained before it happened. It was something which was decreed before it happened. It was something destined before it happened. So these are some of the proofs. He says, then the next point will come. The next point will come. So what is our belief about the Qadr? I'll read the footnote first. He says, in reference to the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in which he used to declare his Lord free from evil. Good and bad, it has been decreed by Allah. But we don't ascribe that bad or the evil to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ used to say what? Uh, وَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّ بِيَدَيْكُ وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكُ Evil is not ascribed to Allah because it does not come from Him. It comes from His creation. Listen carefully. I can hear people talking. I don't know if they're listening. Evil is not ascribed to Allah. It is ascribed to Allah's creation. That's why you say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ From the evil of what he has created, from the evil of his creation. Whether it is the jinns or the human beings. You ask Allah's refuge from their evil. You understand? Evil is not to be ascribed to Allah. He says, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he explains this. And he went on a, on, a, on a long quotation of that. We will read that after. Proofs. When we say we believe in the Qadr, what are the proofs? Always, number one, Ahl sunnah they ask for proofs. Because anybody can claim anything. As al-Imam Hassan al-Basri or Sufyan al-Thawr used to say, لولا الإسناد لقال من شاء ما شاء لولا الإسناد لقال من شاء ما شاء 
if it is not for the isnad, the chain of narrations to know who it goes to, whoever will say whatever he wants. But if you speak, bring proofs. So we say we believe in the Qadr. What are the proofs we believe in the Qadr? That is a good one. Asa an tuhibbu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum. Allah says, maybe you love something but it is bad for you. You don't know the reality. This is a very important point we'll come back to. Another proof that we believe in Qadr. Someone? There's Tadhkira. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Yes. Your will uh, is not absolute. Whatever we want to do, whatever we intend to do, it can only happen if Allah lets it happen. That is a fundamental part of Qadr. We have to know that. Even raising this paper, it won't happen except if Allah lets me do this. He gives me the ability to do that. Or if it's moving a mountain. The simplest to the most complex thing. Give me proof that we believe in Qadr. It's mentioned that Allah has mentioned that this is Qadr. You memorize these surahs? Which one? No, not the ones I read. The ones which have uh, sent. Read it, read it, tell, tell them so they can ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la al-ladhi khalaqa fasawwa. And then? Huh? I can't hear anything. Can't hear anything. Huh? Wal-ladhi Qaddara Fahada. He is the one who has disdained everything. Everything is by Qadr. And this is an important point in this ayah. It says what? He mentions Qadr and what? And Hidayah, guidance. He has pre-decreed and he has shown you the guidance. Don't forget this ayah. We'll come back to it. Another proof about the story of Nuh alayhi salam. When the rain came down and the water came up, Allah says, فَالْتَقَ الْمَاءُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ قَدْ قُدِرْ And the water met. There was a great event. The water of the, he- of this, of the earth, it met with the water of the heavens. فَالْتَقَ الْمَاءُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ About to matter, they met. Huh? Eh? Concerning a matter which was had which had been quoted, it had been decreed, it's going to happen to them. It didn't just happen randomly. No. Another proof. Allah created you from a drop of water. And then he decreed everything for you. Another proof. وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدَرًا مَقْدُورًا And the command of Allah, it has been a decree, it's going to happen. So all of these are proofs of Qadr. And like we said, it is one of the fundamental principles of Iman. It is one of the fundamental principles of Iman. Now when we say we believe in Qadr, what does this mean? Belief in Qadr is divided into four things. Or it's, you can understand it with these four pillars. Four pillars. Who knows them? I'm going to pick on some of you because you're supposed to know. Four pillars. 
I'm going to pick on some of you if someone does not raise up his hand because you are supposed to know. No. Belief in Qadr is divided into four stages or four pillars. When I say to you right now, we believe in Qadr, you will say yes or no? Yes. Okay, what do we believe about Qadr? What is Qadr? Yes, but what is Qadr? Ahsant. That was the second one. What is the first one? Before writing, what comes before writing? Think, you'll get it. It's simple. Huh? Al-ilm, ahsant. Very good. When you say Allah has decreed this, what does it mean? It means Allah, He knew that it's going to happen, right or wrong. Right or wrong. That's the first step. Because if you don't know something is going to happen, how are you going to decree it? <laughs> right or wrong. Like you right now cannot just come out randomly and say, oh, this brother's wife is going to have a baby today. He'll laugh at you. He'll say, my wife is not pregnant. But if you know his wife is expecting and she's having her labor pains right now and she's at the hospital, you'll say what? So you know his wife is going to have a baby. You lo will you be right or wrong? It has to be based on knowledge. That's the point. So when you say Allah has decreed everything, it means what? Allah has known everything. That is what it means first. Number one, al-ilm. Knowledge of Allah has preceded every single detail of everyone's life. Everything. When you say everything is E-V-E-R-Y-T-H-I-N-G. Capital bold underlined. Allah knows every single detail of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Ya alamu? Huh? Khainatul a'yun. Wa ma tukhfi sudur. He knows the glance. You know the glance when someone passes and you glance to your friend without him seeing? Allah knows that. And Allah knows even deeper than that. Allah knows what is in your soul, which nobody knows except you. Allah knows that. He knew that before you knew it. Al-ilm. Allah has known everything which has happened before us, me and you, which is happening right now in every single part of every single part of his creation, not just earth. Whether it is Mars or Jupiter, whatever. And Allah knows everything which will happen. And Allah knows that which did not happen, if it happened, how it would have happened. Allah knows that also. Complete knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about his ilm so many times in the Quran. Right or wrong? Allah speaks about his knowledge so many times in the Quran. So the first stage of believing in Qadr is Al-ilm, knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Rabbana wasi'ta kulla shay'in. Huh? No. Rahmatan wa ilma. O oh Allah, you have encompassed everything with your mercy and your knowledge. Everything, Allah knows it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَحَاطُ وَبِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا أحسنت. So that you know that Allah is capable of everything. And Allah, His knowledge has encompassed and covered everything. Kulla shay in everything. So that is number one. To believe in Qadr is to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has believed, has known every single thing. That is why I asked you before here in Maghrib. Since we're discussing one of the attributes of Allah. Do we have knowledge or not? 
Do we have knowledge or not? We do, right? Cats, they have knowledge or not? It's a more complex question now. Of course they do. You ever seen a cat chewing on your cartons or your trousers? He knows that's not food, that's not tuna. He knows that. Okay? Sharks, they have knowledge or not? Yes. Even salmon. They have knowledge. Every year they will trek thousands of miles and come back to Canada because they love this country so much, I think. Huh? And they give birth here, then they, they die, and the children go downstream again, then they come up again. They call it the Salmon Run. You've seen that? Amazing, subhanAllah. And all those birds which go down to Mexico in winter, the birds are smart. They run, they run from winter. What? You see any geese around here now? There's always those geese who are with us here at Abu Huraira. You know those geese? That family is always here. Winter comes down in Mexico. You think it's random? It's not random. They have knowledge? Knowledge. My point is, do they have knowledge? Yes, according to their ability. Do we have knowledge? Yes, according to our ability. Does their knowledge equal our knowledge? No. Likewise, when we say Allah has knowledge, it does not mean we are resembling him to us. His knowledge befits him. His majesty. How is it? We don't know. And Allah has defined. He encompasses everything. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want someone to give me that ayah in Surah Al-Sajda or Surah Al-Aqman which defines Allah's knowledge. Sajda or Luqman. Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'a. Allah, only him, he knows the knowledge uh, he has the knowledge of the hour. When is the last day going to come? Who is the greatest human being ever? Who is the greatest human being ever to live? Uh? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is the most knowledgeable person in the Sharia and about Allah ever? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even him, he did not know. Allah says, yes, alunaka anis sa'a. They ask you, Muhammad, about that hour. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the reply? Huh? Huh? Allah says, say, Muhammad, fi ma anta min dhikraha. How are you supposed to know it? Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that. Fi ma anta min dhikraha ila rabbika Muntahaha, its knowledge ends with your Lord. Tell them that. That is number one. Complete the ayah, Bilal. In Allah and then Wayunazilul Ghaith. Only Allah knows when it's going to rain and where it's going to rain and how much rain is going to rain. Your weatherman is just a forecast. That's why he called himself. It's called the weather forecast. They look at the satellites, which is good, and they predict, you know, we see the rain clouds so. Chances of rain, as they say always, right or wrong. But he doesn't know. Allah knows exactly every single drop, where it drops, in every part of this world. Number three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows right away when the woman conceives what is in the womb. And it's going to be male or female. Before you go for your, did you say x-ray? Only Allah knows. Number four. And no person here knows what you're going to earn tomorrow. What you're going to eat tomorrow. You can plan. Is it going to happen or not? You don't know. Only Allah knows exactly what you're going to eat even tomorrow. That means tomorrow and after. And number five, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ And nobody here knows where you are going to die. 
You might plan and say, you know, I came to Canada so I can retire and, and die here. You never know. Allah knows all of this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was not the ayah I intended. I want an ayah which, saw, which shows the depth of Allah's knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In it is the word Tasqutu. How does the ayah start? وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِيحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ Allah says. And to him belongs the keys of the unseen. Nobody knows them except him. See, when we say this, the people, they call us Wahhabis. They call us, you don't love the Prophet. When you say, the Prophet does not know everything. Allah, he mentions all these verses I'm mentioning now. These are special things for him only. The Prophet only knew what he was told by Allah. He doesn't know the unseen completely. What me and you are going to eat tomorrow. He doesn't know that. It's sad. But if only people read the Quran and believed in Islam properly. Simple. The verses are simple. You can see in them. Subhanallah. Complete the ayah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِيهُ الْغَيْبِ وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِيهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ And then وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ He knows what is in the land and what is in sea. In the oceans. Human beings, until today with all our GPS and GPS and GPS and all the technology we have and the X-ray and the endoscope and everything we have, we only know 1% of what is in the oceans. Ask any marine biologist, that's what they'll tell you. We only know 1%. Or some of them say 10%. 90% we are still to discover. That is why every day there's a new species we discover in the ocean. Every day. On a daily basis. That's why they're running out of names. Catfish, dogfish, flying fish. They had the other one. It was on the news last week. They call it the devil fish. Who saw that? It looks scary. You right? Yes. And it has a light. Subhanallah. You know like the, read, the lamp, the reading light? It has a light like that. To attract its prey. And then when you come, it eats you. Look how Allah created. Allah knows everything in the land and in the ocean. This is what Allah says. Next. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ And there's no leaf. Which falls, you tell me, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhana rabbi. How many leaves fall onto the ground during fall? Right now we just went through fall, summer then came fall. All the trees or most of the trees, they shed their leaves, right or wrong. Every single leaf which falls, Allah knows it. Every single grain, and Allah says, whether it is in the darkness or in the light, Allah knows it. That is his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number one, in believing in the qadr of Allah, decree of Allah, we have to believe he knows every single thing. Number two, the second stage was the kitabah. Allah, he wrote down everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write down because he's going to forget. Ha subhana rabbi. He does not forget. لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى. My Lord does not make mistakes nor does he forget. But he wrote it down. Everything he wrote it down. And that is the book which is called the Lawh al And nobody has seen into that book. Because that is the knowledge of everything. That is with him. That is the second stage of Qadr. We have to believe everything has been written. Give me proofs for that. Proofs. ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في السماوات ولا في السماء ولا في ولا في السماوات ولا في السماء. آه. 
illa fi kitab min qabli an nabra'aha there's nothing which happens allah says in the heavens or here in the earth except that it has been written down it's in the book another one yes 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 don't be afraid don't be afraid That could be yes or no. Katawa could mean qaba. He has decreed. Wa kulla shay'in ahsaynahu kitaba. And everything we have encompassed it and covered it is written down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا And all these other proofs. Allah has written down everything. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Awwal ma khalaq Allah al-qalam." The first thing Allah created was the pen. فَقَالَ لَهُ أُكْتُبْ He said to it, "Write." He said, "What should I write?" Allah said to it, "Write everything which will happen until the day of judgment." وَذَلِكَ قَبْلَ قَبْلَ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ وَذَلِكَ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ قَبْلَ خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ الْأَرْضِ and that was fifty thousand years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. I know Allah has known exactly what will happen. It's written down. That is number two. Number three from the belief of Qadr is the Mashia. The Mashia. We call it in English the will or the permission. Like we just mentioned previously, we believe that nothing happens without Allah's permission. Big or small, large or minute, it doesn't matter. On a national, on a planetary level, on an individual level, nothing happens in His creation without His permission. Whose is this, all of this? Who does it belong to? Allah. Do you think it makes sense that someone can do something in his creation without him permitting it? I'm asking you, think. You are human beings. Allah gave you good brains. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided you to Islam. I'm asking you a question because many people who deviated in the matters of Qadr, they deviated here. I'm asking you, do you think anyone can do anything in this creation of Allah without his permission if you say yes then you are actually saying that there's someone who can do something which Allah does not want yes if that's what you say that's what it means and that is kufr that you're saying there's someone greater than Allah nothing happens without his permission that's why you see all these verses we read even the leaf which falls it's by Allah's permission when the tsunami happens, it's by Allah's permission. And that is why we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no strength to do anything. And there's no might to change anything. Illa billah, except by Him. That's what it means. La hawla la quwwata illa billah. Complete belief in the Qadr. You can't, you as a human being, you can't do anything without Him. So number three is the Mashiach. And the proof, we just read that. You cannot wish except after Allah wishes it. Now here, we have to differentiate between Mashiach and Mahabba. Mashia and Mahabba. You have to differentiate between the will of Allah and the love of Allah. Or even you can say Rida, the pleasure of Allah. You understand? We said nothing happens without Allah's eh? Allah's pleasure? No. Allah's love? No. Allah's permission. Because those who denied Qadr, they say then how come the sins happen? 
Does Allah let the sins happen? Are those also under the mercy of Allah? Asking you now. Are they under the will of Allah? The answer is yes. Nothing happens without his will. But does he like it? It doesn't mean he approves it or he likes it or is pleased with it. No. That is a completely different subject. That is why we read the ayah which says what? وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى He is the one who pre-decreed and he also guided. He guided what? Najdain. Two different ways. The good way and the bad way. Allah created you and then showed you two ways, good and bad. Whatever of those you choose to do, you cannot do it without Allah's permission. But he only loves those actions you do which he guided you to. Those ones he loves. These ones he let you do it because he gave you a choice. And that's why this life is about. It's about what? What is this life about? It's a test. It's a test. Nothing happens without Allah's permission. But Allah is only pleased with the good. You understand? It's very simple. It's not complex. And number four, from the belief in Qadr, is the actual khalq, the creation of that action. We mentioned this before. Are we created or are we creators? We are created. Right or wrong? We are created. So all of our actions are also created. They cannot be defined as uncreated because yourself you are created. You understand? We are created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu khalaqakum ma ta'amalun. Allah created you and created your actions. Now people, they mix up this belief. So it is what? Knowledge. And then? Writing. And then? The will of Allah. And then? The action itself happening now. Knowledge. Writing. The will, the permission of Allah, and then the, the actual creation, the happening of the action. Al ilm, wal kitaba, wal mashi'a, wal khalq. Many people they say, oh, so all our actions are created. So it means we have no choice. No. Your actions are created before, because you are created. It has no connection with choice. The issues pertaining you and me and him and him and every single individual human being, you have the choice. You understand? Issues of good and bad, you have the choice. The issues of the kaunia, the issues of the universe, it's called the universal decree. When is going to rain? When there's going to be a snowstorm? Where there's going to be an earthquake, that is not up to me and you. That is his decree, whenever he decrees, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? But the issues pertaining to us, good or bad, what you want to do and what you don't want to do, that is completely up to who? Huh? Are you sure? How come, you know, sometimes, you know, brothers, they say to others, Akhi, get up and pray. Say, Akhi, this is my qadr. This is my qadr. Right? Right or wrong? They say that. This is my decree, you know. No. Why don't you get up and make wudu and pray and then say, Alhamdulillah, this was my decree. How can we use the decree or the qadr only in the sins? Do you realize that? You tell the sister, you have to cover up properly as a Muslim. Says, no, this is my qadr, you know. This was decreed for me. You say, but you, you have a good job, eh? Yes, yes. I'm, I don't know, somewhere I'm a PR, whatever, whatever, PA, whatever. You say, why don't you sit at home and not find a job and say, this is my qadr? How come it only works for the bad things? And that is called the qadariya iblisiya, 
those are the followers of Iblis. Those are the followers of Iblis. He is the first one who used this, 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 uh, this weak excuse. Right now here, right now here, I'm, I'm asking you, fellow human beings, who feels he's being forced to stay here? Unless your father brought you here, that does not apply to you, of course. We're not meaning that force. Who feels he's being forced that you have no choice to be here? Anyone? Answer is no. Everyone has a choice here, right or wrong. Right now you can decide to leave. Right now there's so many Muslims who decided to stay at home and watch TV instead of coming and benefiting for one or two hours. Right or wrong? Right now when we live here, some will make the choice to go to Tim Hortons. Some will make the choice to go back home. Some will make the choice to read some Quran. Everyone has a choice and all of us know that. You will know it in your heart. Nobody is forcing you. You understand? So that should not confuse in anything about Qadr. Everyone has a choice. Allah brought you here and Allah gave you a choice. Some will choose to be atheist, some will choose to be Christian, some will choose to be agnostic, some will choose to be Muslim. Some will choose to be good practicing Muslim, some will choose not to be good Muslims. Everyone has a choice. And the choice you make, that choice you make, okay, that choice you make, Allah knew it before he created you. That's what he wrote down. So whatever Allah wrote down, what Allah decreed, is not what Allah is forcing on you. No. Allah knows you. Allah knows you. So he wrote down, my slave, Abdul Aziz, he's going to do this and this and this and this. And based on that, I'm going to give him this. This is his reward. You understand? Nobody is being forced to anything. It's like you right now. Him. I can speak to him or him. Those who have children. That's the best example I usually give. He right now can write down for me what is happening in his house. Because he knows. 8.56. Okay. They are in their pajamas. They are in bed. About to sleep. Maybe one is drinking water. He can write that down. Right or wrong? Does it mean he is forcing them? No, he's doing what based on what? He's doing that based on what? The knowledge he knows. The knowledge. Allah knows you. So he wrote what you are going to do. Not what he's forcing you to do. You understand? And that is how we understand Qadr. That is how Qadr is. You understand? Allah knows what you will choose. Let's go back to your child. You know your child very well. You know your child very well. If you had a bottle of water and uh, um, I have to give healthy <coughs> examples. So you had a banana in your hand. You know your child very well. If you tell him choose one, you know exactly what he's going to choose right or wrong. He's your child, you know. You know that based on what? Based on previous knowledge. You know his choice based on previous knowledge. Now that is us human beings. What about the one who created us? The one who we read. He knows even the leaf when it falls. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows me and you when we were in the wombs of our mothers. He knew what we'll do 50,000 years before creating the heavens and the earth. That's what Allah wrote down. You are going to live 60 years. Huh? You will make this much money. You understand? And whether how you're going to end, and that's the most critical thing, good or bad. So this is how you simply understand Qadr. This is the most simple way. And the Prophet Sallallahu he told us, you're not supposed to delve and indulge yourself to think about the Qadr. It won't get you anywhere. It won't get you anywhere. And you'll just confuse yourself. Know that, number one, you have a choice. And everybody has agreed to that. Know that, number two, Allah has known everything. But he, don't, he, does, he does not force you. 
And number three, very fundamental part of Qadr. Very important. See, all of us, we are good when the good is happening. Problems come when the bad is happening. From the fundamental principles of believing in Qadr is to know, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا Allah does not oppress anything. Allah does not do zulm. This is a fundamental belief of the Muslims in our God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has exalted himself from oppression. He does not oppress anyone. He does not need to oppress you. Allah says, ah, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I have made oppression haram on myself, Allah says. I have prohibited prohibish, uh, 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 oppression on myself. He does not oppress anyone or anything. He is al-adl. He is justice. You understand? This is a fundamental belief of the Muslims. Whether you knew it or not, and there's so many ayahs we can read in the Quran. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْءَ وَلَكِنَّ النَّاسَ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Huh? Allah does not oppress. You have to, once you believe in that, Wallahi, you will be happy. Your heart will be calm. If you believe that. He says that in his book, he does not oppress. So whatever good or bad happens to you, you should know that what? This is not an oppression to me. If it was bad, it's because of my sins. Maybe I deserve this. Or maybe it's what? A test. Because this life is about what? Test. There is some people, they say the worst words someone can say. They say, why me? Those are the worst words you can ever say. You are complaining to him, subhanallah. You are complaining about him. He knows you, why it's happening to you. And Allah, because he does not oppress, he cannot bring you a test you cannot handle. You have to know that. Otherwise, that will be oppressive, right or wrong? If I took Muhammad here right now, how old are you, Muhammad? Seven. And I give him university level calculus test. I give it to him right now here. Four pages or three pages of university calculus. You think he'll be able to do it? I say he has to pass this test. Isn't this zulm from me? Isn't this oppression? I'm oppressing the, the small child, right or wrong? So Allah will never give you, Allahul Mathalul A'la, and He has the best examples. He'll never give you a test which you cannot handle. He cannot oppress you in anything. He cannot. He cannot, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, if you want to be happy, you have to know this. Imam Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he mentions this in his, so many of his books. You have to know. You have to say to yourself, whatever Allah chose for me is better than what I can choose for myself. If anyone can live by these two principles, you'll always be happy. And you are on the way to Jannah, inshaAllah. Number one, when you know Allah does not oppress, you follow that up with something else. Whatever Allah has chosen for me, that is better than what I can choose for myself. And this applies, especially like we said, during times of bad and evil and hardship. You wanted this job so much. You studied for the interview and you dressed up well and you went. You never got it. Know that. That is the time you say what? What Allah chooses for me is better than what I want for myself. That's why we read the ayah, Asa and Tuhibbu Shay'an wa huwa Sharrul lakum. Maybe you love something, but that is bad for you. You don't know. We are humans. What do we know past now, nine o'clock? What do we know? You understand? What Allah has chosen for me is better than what I can choose for myself. Whoever lives by that principle will always be happy will always be pleased with Allah. When you're pleased with Allah, Allah pleases you. The Muslims, when they suffer something, they say, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا 
nothing comes to us except what he has decreed for us. He does not oppress. He is our patron. He is our mawla. That is enough. You understand? That is how a Muslim believes and that is what we believe about the Qadr. And even the things we might see and we think they are bad. You became sick. You lost your child. Your business collapsed. There was an earthquake. There was that is bad in our eyes, our limited knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not oppress everything which happens. It is either people are deserving it, it's a punishment or it's a test. Everything. Everything. And from his justice subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you commit a sin, he only repays you that much. If you do something good, he multiplies it by 10 up to 700 times. That shows you co complete, perfect justice and the mercy of Allah. So what is our part now? What is our part? Number one, we have to believe in Qadr. And the four stages of Qadr, which are? Number one, knowledge of Allah has preceded everything. Number two, Al-Kitab, Allah has written down everything. Number three, the Mashiach, the will. Nothing happens without Allah's will. And number four, everything is created. It cannot happen before without Allah's permission. What is our job after that? See, the beauty the beauty of having the correct belief in the Qadr. You know what's the beauty of it? Your heart is calm always. Always. Your heart is tranquil. You're always in a peaceful state of mind. You might become sad, yes. You lost your child, that's not something easy. You are healthy, then you, are, you, are, you got a sickness which is a serious sickness. It's not easy, you'll be sad as a, as a, as a, as a human being. But will you be like those who scream and shout and maybe they want to commit suicide and they say, why me? No. You will say what? Qaddar Allah ma This is what Allah has decreed. This is better for me. This is what I deserve. Always. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that's what he said. Ajaban li amril mu'min. Amazing. Amazing. Subhanallah. Is the matter of the believer, the mu'min. Inna amrahu kullahu khair. Inna amrahu kullahu khair. His matters are always good. In asabahu, in asabathu, in asabahu darra'u. Huh? When something good happens to him. Shakar. He thanks Allah. Fahuwa khairun lahu. He becomes good. And if something bad happens to him. Sabar, he becomes patient and he becomes good for you. And then he said, وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنٍ But that is only for the true mu'min, not just for anyone. You have to train yourself to reach that stage. Thankfulness and patience. Number three, what is our job? So do we just sit and say, okay, so it is Qadr, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. No. You do what you have to do and the rest you leave it to Allah. That is tawakkul. You do your part. If it's decreed for you, it will happen. If it's not, say alhamdulillah, this is what Allah chose. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, we finish off with this today. He says, al-mu'min qawiyyun. Huh? Al-mu'min qawiyyun. Complete the hadith. Who knows the hadith? Ahabu ila Allahi min al mu'min al da'if. The believer who's strong is more beloved to Allah than the believer who's weak. Afi kulli khair. But in both of them, there's good. But in both of them, there's good. They are believers, alhamdulillah. But the one who's strong is more beloved to Allah. Strong, it means muscles. Huh? Strong, it means I can, I can uh, 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 bench press 250 pounds. That's what strong means. The Prophet ﷺ, he says what? 
ليس القوي ب السرعة The strong is not the one who can wrestle people and bring them down But the strong one is the one who can control his anger That's the strong one يرحمك الله The one who's strong in his iman Is more beloved to Allah than the one who's weak And of course if you're strong in your iman and your body Then nur ala nur Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah But in both of them there's good And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجِزَنْ He says, be diligent in getting what you want. Do the efforts to get what you want. وَلَا تَعْجِزَنْ And do not become lazy. It's not a religion of laziness. Not us. We built the whole world. And then we became lazy now. We became enslaved. You understand that? وَلَا تَعْجِزًا Do not become lazy. What you want to do, do your efforts. That's what our Prophet ﷺ is teaching us. You understand? وَلَا تَعْجِزًا If it happens for you, what should you say? Say, Alhamdulillah. If it does not happen for you, what do you say? قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مَا شَافَعَلْ Allah has decreed and whatever he, do, he wants, he does. This is what he has decreed. You worked hard for that business. You put your effort, you're not lazy, but it never worked. You say, this is what Allah decreed, this is what is good for me. If it happened, alhamdulillah. And after that, if it does not happen, say, قَدَّرَ Allah اللَّهُ مَا شَا فَعَلْ Allah has decreed whatever he wants, he does. وَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ and do not start saying law if if fa inna law taftahu abwab ash-shaytan because law if it opens the doors of the shaytan the devil you start to stress and your heart becomes broken and your iman becomes weak in qadr if if only the lazy people use if you understand but if you follow the hadith you did your effort. Ihris ala mayunfaq. You did everything you could. Are there ifs left? There's no ifs. We did what we called. Alhamdulillah. Khalas. Close the chapter. Move on. You understand? What the problem is if you didn't even do the right efforts, then you'll have ifs all your life. This is the belief in the qadr. Very simply. Very simply. And I hope inshallah all of you understood well and benefited. Do you have any questions? We'll stop here for today. The next point he mentions, now it's the matters of takfir. He says that none of them used to declare anyone from the people of the Qibla disbeliever on account of committing a sin. This is the major problem which is happening today. Any questions? Now, there's a piece of paper. I think the sisters had a question there. Behind you, uh, Fahd. Naam, Akhi. Does the qadr change with the dua? Yes, Allah said that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he clarified that. There's no specific dua. There's no specific dua. But Allah, he put some things up to you. Allah has decreed, my slave Muhammad is going to live 60 years. But then Allah teaches us through His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There's some things if you do, they increase your edge. Like Silatul Rahim, being good to your relatives. Silatul Rahim, it increases your edge and increases your risk also. You become rich. If you want to become rich, start treating well your relatives. It changes the Qadr. What Qadr does it, does it change? It changes the qadr which the angels have. We discussed this hadith in Arba'in Nawiyah. When you are in the belly of your mom, Allah sends the angel and he writes down how many things? Four things. He writes what? Rizq and Ajal, age and Then 
the actions Shaqiyun or Sa'id those ones that's what the angel has for you the angel who has written for you he knows this so and so he knows Abdul Aziz has been written down 55 but Allah knows already my slave Abdul Aziz he's going to make dua so he doesn't become sick a lot maybe it was decreed with the angel become sick so then the angel will be told to change but with Allah is this new it's not new with Allah Allah knew already Allah knew you have been given 55 but then you are going to make dua or you're going to treat well your relatives so he can give you more you understand no that is what it changes is it complaining when you tell someone about your problems if someone can help you with your problems then yes otherwise don't speak your problems to people who can't help you people will disrespect you take this advice from me don't speak of your problems to people who can't help you whether it is physically or by good words they will only disrespect you in the long run and if you have complaints complain to Allah Allah loves when we complain to him this is something we have to know Allah loves when you complain to him and we mentioned this when we we're discussing dua Look at the dua, the ad'iyah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi The prophets of Allah, Nuh, Hud, um, Yunus alayhi salam, Yusuf, Yaqub. Look at the duas, they used to complain to Allah. That is what Allah wants us to do. Allah tests us when that something happened, that problems happen. Allah wants to check, are we going to go back to him or we think we can solve it? See the believer whenever it happens right away he says what hasbi allah ni'mal wakil inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un la hawla wa la quwata illa billah you go to allah yaqub alayhi salam used to say what inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah i complain my sadness to allah he was in a great problem he lost his son yusuf who used to love him a lot and then his son binyamin he didn't go to complain says i complain to allah You understand? Yunus alayhi salam complained to Allah, La ilaha illa anta subhanak, inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Ayyub alayhi salam complained to Allah, Rabbi inni massan yadur, wa anta arhamu al-rahimin. Complain to Allah. That is the point most of us we are missing in our lives. Wallahi, complain to Him and see if the problems are going to be solved or not. Nuh alayhi salam he said what inni maghlubun fantasir right or wrong say dear rab 950 years i've called them now i've given up so help me now read surah nuh nuh is complaining qala rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara falam yazidhum du'a illa firar any complain any complain rab this is what i did and now that's it now i'm making dua against them complain to Allah but if people can help you let's say you have a financial problem there's nothing wrong with complaining to your brother who can help you if you need advice there's nothing wrong so he can help you yes but don't be someone who just complains to everyone he says I do not do um, hizab oh, what is hizab if I go to outside with wudu it's pray time can i pray because my one of friends said i have to do wudu again because i'm not covering my head hijab okay i do not do hijab if i go outside with wudu is it and prayer time can i pray because you can pray not putting on the hijab does not mean you don't have wudu your wudu does not break if you take out your hijab but you can't pray you can't pray without the proper hijab you have wudu but you can't pray without the proper hijab because the woman for her to pray she has to cover her head and her whole body including her legs to pray you can't pray with jeans we'd always say this to the sisters you can't pray with pants you can't it's not allowed women talking about women and for men you can't pray with those tight pants 
Why do you even wear tight pants? You're a man. My son is four years old and he's acting lazy. He's too, he's too young, sister. He's too young. When I tell him to pray with me, please advise. It's good, alhamdulillah, that you started when he's four. That's good. He'll stand and then he'll go. He'll wander about and do his adventures. Then baby come back for sujood then go back. That's okay. He's still four. That's young. When they're seven, then you become a bit serious. Not even that serious. You train them. When they're ten, then you have to be serious. But this is good if you can start from four years, alhamdulillah. It's sad. Some people, some families, their children, they're over the age of seven, ten. They've never seen their parents praying. Why do you believe that your birth and your ch and death days cannot be changed? How can you change your birth day, sister? You get born again. We are not Christians. You cannot be born again. It's done. There's two things you don't choose. One is your parents. You don't choose who your parents. Or you in the womb and then you are given a choice. Okay, pick one. If you're in the womb, then you have a parent already. You don't choose that. And death, you can't choose. That's, that's decreed for everyone. That's the way this life is. That's the way this life is. Only the prophets, they were given a choice. Only the prophets of Allah, they were given a choice. If they want to die or to stay for longer. The prophets, they were given a choice. Every prophet was given a choice. But when the time comes, khalas, your time has come. And that's the test. You have to understand, this is about a test. This life is a test. This is a test. If you had a choice, then there's no test. The test is really lost, Yani. Where's the test? The test is to not know that I might die tomorrow evening. Now that is a test which makes you become good. Right? But if you knew, you'd do whatever you want to do and then... Naam. Any more questions? Yes. Do we have free will? Answer him, guys. What is the difference between free will and choice? Same words. Same, same. Free will and choice. Same thing. Right now, I'm asking you, when, he, when someone asks you that, ask him back. Right now, who is forcing you to be here with me? What is he going to say? Nothing is forcing me. We have a choice. Like we said, the issues pertaining to us, we have a choice in that. Issues pertaining to the universe, we don't have a choice. You understand? Second question. No. Jannah and Jahannam, they are eternal. They will be eternal. But they had a beginning. They are not like Allah. Nothing is like Allah. They are created. Allah says they are my creation. Allah chose them to be eternal. Right? Allah chose them to be eternal. Now, Any more questions? Naam If you die by an accident, Everything is Qadr. Everything is Qadr. For us human beings, we have these words, these terminologies. Oh, he died of natural death. It was his day. Oh, he died of a heart attack. It was his day. That was his qadr. He died all of a sudden. He was with us yesterday, you know. He was laughing and he gave a lecture yesterday. And he was drinking water and then he died. There's nothing by accident. And there's nothing by chance. These words, accident... You can say accident was unintentional from your part. 
you know, I got into a car accident, you, meaning you didn't intend. But was it accident as qadr? No, Allah had decreed already. You will make, one day you'll make that mistake, you'll get into that car accident. Chance. Oh, it came by chance. There's no chance. Chance to us, maybe. We think it's chance. Allah decreed it. Luck. Good luck. Or bad luck. Do we believe in good luck and bad luck? Yes and no. Yes, in terms of, if it's from Allah, we can say yes. This is what Allah, Allah gave me good and Allah gave me bad. That's it. Even though we don't ascribe bad to Allah, like we said. But there's nothing which happens by random sequence and random events, chance. No. Everything which happens here in this universe of His. That's why every day we remind ourselves, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of the universe. Everything in it happens by His will. Now, so for us, we can define it like that. You know, but was it decreed? Yes, it was decreed. Allah knew it. Allah knew it. We never knew it. Everything. Right now, you look healthy. He's healthy. He's healthy. Tomorrow, he's diagnosed with a disease which you never, you never think he had that. We didn't know. It wasn't, it wasn't chance. It wasn't chance. Huh? Where, is chance? Where, does, where does chance live anywhere? Mother Nature. I want to see her. Hope to meet her one day. I hope she's not too old by the time I meet her. Though. You know, this is the atheist, the way they talk. They say, Mother Nature did this for us. Subhanallah. They'll do everything to take away God, Allah. Mother Nature did this to us. Who is, where is she, Annie? How many supercomputers does she have? Yeah. I'm really curious to see her. She must have some long hair. Because she's Mother Nature, right? <laughs> Probably dreadlocks. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Stop laughing, yeah. How to answer my non-Muslim co-worker when they ask me why God makes tsunami or bad things that affect many people? You tell him this, God does not oppress. He knows why. We don't know why. See, this thing of why, like we said, why? We don't know why. But we know for sure he does not oppress. For sure we know that he does not oppress. Why? Maybe they deserve it. Maybe they deserve it. And you'll see these tsunamis and earthquakes and mostly they only happen to those people who are sinful past the limits. They are sinful past the limits. Doing the worst sins you can think of. Why it happens? Why did this earthquake happen? We don't know why. But he knows why. I don't know why. But everything, there's an eternal wisdom behind it. And we don't know everything. We believe that Allah created us but left us alone because they believe that we are insignificant. No. Allah did not leave you alone. Allah says, in fact, the opposite of this. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Right? Huh? Allah says, you think, you human being, you're just created to just go like that. No. No. Allah never left you alone. Allah is watching you every time. Allah guided you. Allah has given you the ability to write this paper. And that's enough. How many people don't even know how to write? Allah has made you alive today. You have food and shelter and everything you want. How did Allah leave you alone? Any more questions? When Israfil blows the trumpet, when the trumpet is blown, every living being will fall dead. Every living being will fall dead. Of the created beings. You understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he created? No, he's the creator. He's the one who gave Israfil the command to blow the horn on the day of judgment. Every living creature will fall dead. No. 
those are Jannah and Jahannam, those are inanimate things. Living beings on this world, you have to die so you can be what? Resurrected. Yes. Where is the qadr in people who do magic? They do magic and they separate between a man and his wife. Does magic work? Yes. It works. You can separate between a man and his wife and create problems. Where is the qadr in that? If you read the eye, you will see the qadr in that. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِّينَ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And they cannot harm anyone except by the permission of Allah. We say this, nothing happens in this world without his permission. Not of the magician, not of the United States uh, army, not of your rising up of your fork to eat your salad, not of you going to the washroom. Nothing happens without his permission. You understand? Yes. If he wants it to happen to you, it will happen. The magic. If he does not want it to happen to you, Allah subhanahu wa is protecting you. They can do all the magic they want. It will never happen to you. That is why we believe. We don't fear the magician. If you put your trust in Allah. Nobody can harm you. You understand? Naam. Any more questions? We have a small request to make. Small request. Sheikh Wasiullah al-Abbas, let's make dua, he gets the visa. This is a great scholar. If he came here, this is a sharaf for us. I would say sharaf in English. It's an honor for us. If that great alim can come here, that's an honor for us. He submitted his documents already. Make dua that Allah gives him the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, makes it easy for him to, to get that visa. The conference will be 25th to 28th. It says, sorry brother, I was not able to listen to the lectures about Salah. You mentioned last time to check the YouTube video, Hack the Truth. I tried. If you tried, you see me there. Or someone who looks like me. Hack the Truth, if you search, you will see it. Hack, H-A-Q-T-H-E-T-R-U-T-H, -E yes. No space, exactly, thank you. No space. If you search that, you'll see. The videos will come. They're all there. Or search Abu Umar. You'll see. You'll see someone come like me. They looks like me. If you search, you'll see. If you go to the channel, you'll see all the videos about the prayer series. They're there. And also now about the Aqidah, he is there also. The Aqidah series we did last, week, last year. The Aqidah of the four Imams. It's there. It's there. Nam Umar. The brother is asking that when he was praying, he said, A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. He read Surah Al-Fatiha. After Fatiha, he said again, A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajeem, and read another surah. After the salah, one of the brothers came and said, that one, A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajeem, in the beginning was enough. Yeah, it's enough. Some of the scholars, they say that. One is enough for every rakah. That's the opinion I follow. When you start every rakah, you say, A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajeem. When you start, after you say, Wala dhalin, ameen, you don't say, A'udhu Billah. You say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you read the surah. Naam. We'll continue next week, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Shadun la ilahi la anta astaghfiruka tubilik.